where President Muhammadu Buhari has directed the Central Bank of Nigeria not to provide forex for the importation of food items or fertilizer. Speaking on Thursday at a meeting of the National Food Security Council at the State House in Abuja, the president urged private businesses bent on food importation to source their forex, uh, exchange, foreign exchange rather, independently, saying, and I quote, use your money to compete with our farmers instead of using foreign reserves to bring in compromised food items to divest the efforts of our farmers, end of quote. He also directed that blenders or fertilizers should convey products directly to state governments so as to skip the cartel of transporters undermining the efforts to successfully deliver the products to users at reasonable costs. And joining us to make sense of all of this is Professor Adebayo Kolawoli of the Department of Agricultural Extension and Rural Development from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abiyakuta. Good to have you, have you Professor. Good morning. Thank Good to be on the program. Thank, thank you for joining us. Now, Professor, do you consider this a good decision by the federal government? Uh, well, what it is is a good intention. Um, good intention because, uh, as stated in the statement, uh, it is to prevent unnecessary competition with local farmers uh, by bringing in cheap imported food. And that's all that it is, intention. In terms of uh, reality and the policy statement, I think there are questions uh, to be asked. Uh, in terms of the preparedness of Nigeria to um, restrict access to foreign exchange for both food and fertilizer importation. Mm. Uh, the first will be, do we have enough food uh, such that we can bring food import out of our uh, import basket? Uh, that's a big question. And in my opinion, I don't think we are there yet. Two, do we have enough fertilizer uh, to say that uh, local production is enough to meet the need of our farmers? Again, the answer is no. So while the intention from the statement is clear, we don't want unnecessary competition with our local farmers, the necessary requisites, the things to be put in place to ensure that this become a sound policy of government uh, has not uh, been done. Mm -hmm. And for me, that then is a cause to worry. Right. Professor, there has been accusation of, you know, round tripping over the forest from CBN. And if I ask you, were the farmers even enjoying the forex waiver before now? No, of course not. Uh, farmers, uh, at least your average Nigerian farmer, don't look up to the forex market for any kind of support. However, uh, there are a lot of imported materials that influence the performance of our farms. Uh, for instance, we don't produce any tractor, so tractors have to be imported into the country. Um, despite what the federal government is making us to believe, the fertilizer we produce is not enough for our need. Therefore, we need to import some uh, fertilizer. Two, that three, we cannot produce all the food that we need. It is impossible given the current situation. Therefore, we might need to bring in some food. But those who do it are not farmers. These are businessmen who use the windows of opportunity created by government in the foreign exchange market to support Nigerian agriculture. So unless government has found a way to replace this function being performed by these private individuals, saying a blanket sweeping statement, we don't provide the foreign exchange, for food and fertilizer, I think it's an ambitious move hmm. for which we are not prepared. All right. Now, what's your assessment of the situation? Will the local farmers uh, take advantage of this? And do they have the capacity for food sufficiency locally? Now, will the local farmers take advantage of this? Um, that would seem to be the logical thing to do. But unfortunately, I think the local farmers are constrained. Constrained by three major things. First is the absence of local infrastructure to support the farming business. The farming business requires good roads to function very well. Uh, rural feeder road, the major highway road, they need to be in good functional order for an average farmer 
to take advantage of any uh, opportunities that government is providing because the logistics of movement of food is as important as the production of food itself. And that is why we have quite a lot of food waste at this uh, moment. When uh, tomatoes get rotten en route uh, to the market because of uh, failed infrastructure. Two, um, the amount of fees, levies, and charges mm. that are paid along the value chain of Nigerian food system is outrageous. Uh, practically in every local government, somebody will stop a truck to collect money. And it's not just one entity. This is uh, the police, the road safety, agents of the local government, agents of the state government, and all kinds of touts along the line. And what all of this does is to increase the cost of food production locally. And that takes me to the third item, which is global competitiveness. On the global scene, Nigerian food is not competitive because of all the cumulative of all these um, uh, effects on the cost of local food production. Therefore, when importation is open, you find out that food that is coming from outside of the country becomes cheaper because the unexpected costs associated with food production in Nigeria are just too high. Hmm. All right. But I'm just wondering, hope this will not be another conduit pipe for corruption in the forest market. What do you think? Well, corruption is a, is a big albatross for our country. Uh, it's everywhere. And in my opinion, uh, unless it is tackled, it would affect everything that we do. Now, uh, you would then find people using all kinds of other means to access foreign exchange. And if you say, use your own money, how do you define that? Which is my own money? The money in my bank account or the money from other businesses that I've done overseas? So at the end of the day, the implementation of this uh, intention by the president uh, will become challenged by corruption, by lack of transparency in the entire system. Um, so we are yet to see where this will lead us, but I am not confident that this statement would translate to an advantage for Nigerian farmers. Mm. And that leads me to my last question for you. I mean, in order to ensure that everyone is on the same page, what sort of communication should be put out, especially for farmers at this time? I think at this time, this is a time when we need intergovernmental cooperation. Federal government, state government, and local government need to work together so that first, all the extra levies and charges along the way by different agencies of this government need to be removed. That's very important. Two, our infrastructure needs to improve. You cannot have the kind of rural roads, the kind of uh, poor uh, major roads that we have and expect transporters not to charge as high as they are charging at the moment. I'm not in any way in support of uh, exorbitant transportation costs, but if the cost of running transport, actually if you own a truck or a trailer, the number of fees and levies that you pay is so huge that running that business profitably demands that you charge high for your, um, for your services. And that, again, is a problem for farmers. So for me, I think the message that should be there mm. should be, one, all the support that we can give to the farmers on their farm to ensure uh, high productivity. Two, we need support beyond the farm for storage of our uh, agricultural commodity. That is a major uh, weak link in our value chain. Three, is appropriate transportation, cold transport, dry transport, uh, and then enough... Um, enough um, agro-processing zone and centers along the entire value chain of different uh, agricultural commodities to ensure that our agricultural commodities are of high quality, they are safe to eat, and they are globally competitive. All right. Thank you so very much, Professor Kolawole Adebayo, for your comments, and do keep safe out there. Thank you very much.